a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. Ebum nomini. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is a race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Dominus Fobiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucum, While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said to him in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of the fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, 
the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. Verbum Domini. There is an idiom that goes like this, to be in over one's head. This expression emerged back in the 1600s, and in the English language it was meant for or referred to those Europeans, many of whom could not swim or swim well during that period of time. So if they submerged in water too deep, water deeper than one's head, they were potentially in very serious trouble. Thus, to be in over one's head metaphorically encapsulates profound experiences of grappling with challenges beyond one's depth or understanding. Now, most of us most likely have experienced being in over our heads at some point. Certainly I did, and one of the first experiences I recall as a young lad was going with a group of friends to have a swim in a river called the Monongahela River, which is in southwestern Pennsylvania, uh, where I grew up. And I wasn't a very good swimmer at the time, so when I got into the water, the currents start carrying me away, and I start sinking underneath the water. It was potentially a dangerous situation. But fortunately, I had those who came to my aid, drug me out, and put me on the shore. But certainly, and very physically, I was in over my head. In today's gospel reading from Luke, we encounter Simon, a fisherman, used to being in deep water to try to catch fish. But on this particular occasion, he's had no success. We experience in this gospel passage that the Lord, Jesus, is actually calling him to serve. And yet Simon Peter regrets that he's too human. He's too sinful to fulfill God's choice. In other words, he's in over his head. But God makes up for what Peter lacks. Peter's quite aware of his humanity. He's a fisherman, probably without much education. We know from various gospel readings that he could be stubborn. Sometimes he's a bit of a braggart. Often he lacks courage. But God still calls him to ministry and discipleship and gives him the ability to be the greatest and the first of all the apostles. Simon Peter displays some distinct characteristics, his love of God, his sense of unworthiness before God, and thus he possesses humility, and his commitment, total and complete, to follow God's plan and will for him, in other words, he trusts in Jesus and is willing to follow him. Simon Peter is ready to follow God's directives. He and his partners are told that they will leave everything and follow Jesus and that without looking back, no equivocation. Now, merely feeling unworthy and incompetent does not make us into people that God can work with. We must add to that availability and add to it willingness, willingness to go out into the world and do as the Lord directs, to answer the call to discipleship, to step into that deep water. For us, it is a matter of stop thinking that we can do it ourselves and start trusting in God in all things who will help us complete 
the mission and life that he has given us. To follow him, to take courage, to not be afraid, to step out into the deep, to embrace what the image of Jesus conveys. Jesus, I trust in you. Yet the deep water of our lives may signify a place of uncertainty, challenge, risk, and most definitely, at times, the unknown. The deep water stands in opposition to the shallows of the shoreline, a place of comfort, a place of security, the familiar, and the customary way of doing things, a place where we can depend on our own individual skills our own talents and virtues without ever risking all that much. Now, we may prefer to shallows, but our Lord calls us, commands us, and indeed, life itself forces us to put out into deep water. The pressures of daily life may assail us to the point where we may cry, I cannot do this, or I can't do this anymore where I am in over my head. This cry will be unique to all of our individual situations. Perhaps it's a young mother who is dealing with the stress of her first baby who is chronically ill. Or perhaps it's those suffering from serious ailments and the challenges of repeated medical procedures and medications, or spouses who realize they are not giving themselves fully to each other in their marriage, or still clergy who realize they are not giving themselves fully to their ministry. To all who are at that point of giving up, in one sense, they're right. They cannot do this anymore, at least not alone because they and we, we are not alone in whatever deep waters in our lives, whatever they may be. If we listen carefully through the grace of prayer and become still in our hearts, we will hear Jesus' inviting call. Come, follow me. Do not be afraid. Reside in me. Trust in me. Prevailing, knowing I am with you always through my sacraments that I have initiated for the eternal benefit of your soul. While the deep water of our lives signifies a place of uncertainty and challenge and risk and that unknown, it is also a point of tremendous opportunity, a place of redemption, a place where loss can be turned into gain. St. Faustina's spiritual director once recommended to her, let God push your boat out into the deep waters toward the unfathomable depths of the interior life. And St. Pope John Paul once wrote, our hearts ring out, trusting in Christ's words, put out into the deep in order to open our hearts to the tide of grace and allow the word of Christ to pass through us in all its power. So my friends, today as always, the good Lord asks, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Who will be my disciple into the world? The Lord needs messengers of the good news of salvation. The Lord needs men and women like Peter, who despite feeling unworthy and incompetent for the work of God, despite the pressures and trials of life, the Lord needs those, he needs us, who know they do not need to be afraid. All that remains is to take the risk, step into that deep water and say, here I am, Send me to respond to the call to discipleship and ponder the question, where is the deep water we are commanded to put out into? It is a call to a vocation, to the religious life or marriage. Is that one of the calls? 
Does it mean a change in attitude towards family or people in our community? Does it mean a change to a simpler lifestyle? Or is it a call to venture into sometimes very, very deep waters of our own prejudices and habitual ways of thinking and making changes? We put out into deep water because the Lord is there in faith. He will not let us flounder. He is there to rescue us. Then the Lord will see to it that he renders us fit for the job he wants us to do for him, just as he did with Peter. And today, we celebrate the memorial of St. Teresa of Calcutta who exemplifies in most significant ways stepping out into the deep waters of Christ's call to discipleships. Now, so much is known and written about St. Teresa. Now, let's just bring out a couple of salient points about her life. In her first 20 years of her vocation, they were filled with a lot of happiness and joy. But in September 1946, during a train ride to her annual retreat, Mother Teresa received her inspiration, what she called her call within a call. On that day, in a way she could never really and adequately explain, Jesus' thirst for love and for souls took hold of her heart. Jesus revealed to her the desire of his heart for victims of love and through inspiration and hard work. Mother Teresa established the Missionaries of Charity, a religious community dedicated to the service of the poorest of the poor. But there was a very heroic side of Mother Teresa putting out into the deep in service to the poor. It was revealed after her death in 1997 that her interior life was marked by an experience of a deep and painful an abiding feeling of being separated from God, even rejected by him, along with an ever-increasing lo longing on her part for his love. She called her inner experience the darkness, the painful night of her soul. And it began around the time she started her work for the poor, and it continued for the remainder of her life. But through the darkness, she mystically participated in that thirst of and for Jesus. She trusted in him, and she continued her journey toward him with profound faith and love. St. Peter ventured into deep waters of Christ, as did Mother Teresa. They responded to the call to discipleship and ministry. We also are called, called in unique ways as determined by our Lord, and to not be afraid, and to trust in him.